Champions Cup Saturday games. Apologies, I didn't have all my magnets ready. The shop I usually buy my little magnetic strips from. It's run out of magnetic strips, so they're on auto. Um, they will be ready shortly, so I'll put up a little I don't know, screenshot from Google uh, with the fixtures. Google doesn't do all the logos for some reason. And um, for the times, they are my local times. So you can see the first couple of games. First one is Bath and Ulster. Uh, that one is on at 2 o'clock in the morning here in New Zealand. So I may not watch that one live. Um, but yeah, that one looks like it's it's going to be pretty interesting. Both of the uh, the lineups are, are out. And in terms of the predictions, it's, it's predicted to be... Uh, a pretty close one, a close one between both these sides. I remember watching both these sides uh, in the Champions Cup last year. Bath didn't have the best run of it, um, but also did okay. And um, from the lineups, they've both got uh, they've both got a, a Burns uh, playing for them. So uh, that'll be interesting to see which Burns comes out on top. But. Um, yeah, all the all the more interesting as well because Bath have got their their English internationals back. So you got Underhill, you got McConaughey and Joseph. So Underhill played the most minutes of those three at the World Cup. Then Joseph, then McConaughey. So yeah, how how well Underhill goes starting at seven uh, will be interesting to watch whether he's kind of tired or if he's kind of at peak fitness. Uh, Roberts is there in the midfield alongside Joseph. Uh, Burns is at fullback. Priestland's at ten. Uh, so it's a it's a pretty good looking bath team to be fair and um yeah i look forward to seeing how they go uh for Ulster, they've also got a bunch of guys baggy and henderson's back um stockdale's there although i think i think i saw stockdale playing for Ulster the other day if i'm not mistaken um addison is there marcel kutsia has come back as well so uh their side those guys are all are all pretty class uh, you gotta say uh henderson's captain as well um so yeah, there's a bunch of English internationals, a bunch of Irish internationals, and um, South African there as well. Is Kutsia the only one? Looks to be. Uh, maybe Ludic on the bench as well. So um, Bath are the favourites. I guess being at home, it kind of makes sense. Uh, seven points is what the rugby forecast algorithm has got them by. Uh, but the bookies are saying it's going to be a wee bit closer with the Bath only by two points. So I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, 2 a.m. I'm definitely going to be watching the highlights rather than the live game for that one. The next one, uh, which is Glasgow up against uh, Sale. Again, it should be a pretty interesting one. Uh, there's a fair few South Africans involved in that game, to be fair. Um with Sale having the Dupree brothers all to themselves. Uh, they've left the South African Sharks franchise and Super Rugby to go and play for Sale Sharks. Um, but yeah, uh, this one also is, is predicted to be, to be kind of relatively close. Uh, there's also guys back from the World Cup. So, I mean, AJ McGinty's getting the start for Sale. And uh, Ali Price is back. I think he had to pull out from the World Cup through injury from memory. So, um, yeah, but you got for sale. I mean, Dupree is at eight. That's Daniel. Dupree is at six. And that's, um, that's Jean-Luc. You got Curry is there at seven. Um, like I said, McG McGinty is there at ten. Ambros Papier. I haven't seen him playing for sale. To be fair, I know he's on loan for, for a short term over from the Bulls. Uh, how he's going to go at nine will be uh, will be an interesting one to watch. Um, Van der Merwe is there. Robert Dupree is on the bench. Ashton is going to come off the bench and be looking for another European try. So we'll see how he goes. Um, yeah, but for Glasgow, I mean Seymour is there at fullback. Hastings is at ten. It's a pretty he didn't get more minutes at the World Cup to be fair. Uh, George Horn's at number nine. Um, Matt Fagerson's at, at 8, Gibbons is there, Wilson's there, Pete Horn's on the bench. And they haven't got uh, Faf de Klerk, do sale, and um, I think they're also missing, who else did I read, it was Ludiaka and uh, a couple of other guys as well, so 
yeah, how this one goes kind of remains to be seen. Again, this one's on at 2 in the morning, so despite the fact that I'm wearing the Glasgow jersey now, probably not going to watch that one live. I should have mentioned Nick Grigg uh, is back as well. He's at outside centre, so... Yeah, two games on, uh, 2 a.m. here in New Zealand. I guess those are the early games over there on Saturday uh, for you guys in Europe. But in terms of the predictions, it's uh, Glasgow by 7 according to Rugby Forecast's algorithm. And it's Glasgow by 6 according to the bookies. So Glasgow by about one try is kind of where it is at for that game. Uh, the next one, Leinster up against Benetton. This one is on paper the the most lopsided match that you will get this week uh leinster are the number one favorite for uh winning the whole thing and uh benetton are equal bottom for not being able to get anywhere so i mean good on benetton for for making the champions cup this year when i watched champions cup last year there were no italian teams represented so uh, yeah, good on them for having a team there. They had a pretty good season last year from, from what I saw of the Pro 14, although that uh, kind of was a limited amount. Uh, this game is on at 4.15 in the morning here in New Zealand. So again, uh, I'm still debating as to whether to watch it or maybe like maybe start at 5 o'clock. Start at delayed coverage might be a good one. But there's certainly a lot of talent on display actually from both sides. Um, I mean, you've got Lama there at fullback. Ringrose is going to be playing interesting. Joe Tamani is in there at, at 12. Uh, Lowe's playing. Sexton's playing. McGrath's playing. Uh, Healy is there. Porter, who has been in good form from what I've seen of him as well. Uh, Devin Toner didn't uh, have to, to go to the World Cup duties. Uh, Ryan is there as well. Van der Fleer. So there's a lot of talent uh, in, that, in that Leinster squad. But likewise, I mean, you've got a few fair few uh, Italian internationals there in that Italian squad uh, plus a sprinkling of international talent as well uh, Haywood's there at fullback likewise Esposito's on the wing that's good uh, Spirandino's there Irishman uh, Keatley is there at number 10 so uh, isn't he, I think I read that he's from Dublin, Dublin but he played for Munster right so how he feels about playing against Leinster will be an interesting one to watch. Uh, Duvanaka is one of my, my favorite players who left Super Rugby. He's there at nine. Um, but yeah, Brumstein's there. So Dean Budd. Manu's there at eight. So there's, um, yeah, a good sprinkling of talent. Uh, interesting, interestingly, Tabaldi and Allen are on the bench for this one. So yeah, I'm not quite sure. Either way, uh, Rugby Forecast Algorithm's got Leinster by 24 points. And uh, the bookies have got Leinster by 27. So if that's anything to go by, it'd be more about saving face than about getting a result over in Dublin for, for Benetton. So hopefully they can put in a good shift and don't get, um, don't get totally walloped. But uh, I guess we will see... Uh, the next one, uh, La Rochelle against Exeter. That'll be an interesting one. Uh, there's, again, I don't think I've seen much of La Rochelle at all, to be honest. I don't watch enough Top 14. They didn't make Champions Cup last year. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen, uh, apart from the Top 14 highlights shows, I don't know that I've seen that much of them. So uh, that's going to be an interesting one for me to watch. If I do get up to watch one of the games early, it'll... I'm tempted to watch the Exeter La Rochelle game instead of Leinster Benetton. Nothing against those two teams, but just that on paper that first game is going to be one-sided. So maybe it's better to watch a game which is a bit closer. And on paper, again, this game between Exeter and La Rochelle is supposed to be quite close. Um, in terms of the lineups, I'll be looking at my man Ehi West, who used to play for the Blues, running the show at ten, seeing if he can do a better job there. Uh, than he did for, for the Blues. Not that I'm saying that my Blues woes are, are his problem because those woes have been ongoing since he left. Uh, Preso is there in the front row. Aldrich there as well. Victor Vito is there at number eight. Haven't seen him play for a while. Uh, Dumaru is there in the midfield. So it's a pretty it's a pretty good looking team uh, for... Oh, Mumuru Valo is there on the bench as well uh, for, for La Rochelle. Uh, for Exeter... 
Yeah, they were disappointing in the Champions Cup last year, so I think they're the favourites to get out of this pool from memory, so I'm hoping they can kind of really step up and, and uh, put it into top gear. But, I mean, you got Hogg there, uh, fullback Slade's in the midfield, uh, White Simmons in 9 and 10, Yandel's there, uh, Dave Dennis uh, is back. Um, yeah, there's a, a, it's a pretty big pack, so... How they go at kind of mall time uh, might be an interesting one. I'll have to check what the weather report's doing uh, in that area of France at the weekend. So um, they did. I did read on the BBC that the La Rochelle are unbeaten at home this season. So that does make Exeter's job uh, a little bit a little bit tougher, I suppose. Uh, that being said, rugby forecast has got Exeter as the favourites. Favourites by three points, although the bookies have kind of got it almost at evens, a half a point in favour of Exeter. So they're saying uh, it is going to be a pretty uh, pretty tough job for them. But yeah, I do like that Exeter team on paper. I need to get myself an Exeter jersey uh, at some point. So um, yes, another English and French lineup. The fifth game. We're getting on. Haven't done this for a while. Uh, it's another English and French clash. It's Clermont up against uh, Harlequins. Kind of like, not to the same degree, but kind of like Leinster and Benetton. This one on paper is is appearing to be one of the more lopsided ones. So this one's on at 6.30 though. 6.30 in the morning on Sunday for me here in New Zealand. It's a Saturday game in Europe. So uh, it's between this and Osprey's Munster as to which one I watch because that one is at a more reasonable hour anyway uh claremont uh i think they got beaten uh recently so they'll be looking to bounce back that was top 14 game this is their first game for for the champions cup uh para and lopez nine and ten raka is there um you know these guys are all french internationals likewise a bit of international talent in the likes of uh toyava moala um yato yato was uh was absolutely top class uh, at the World Cup until he kind of got that big hit put on him. Uh, Slamani's there, French international again. So, yeah, it's um, Laidlaw's on the bench. That's an interesting, interesting choice. But I guess uh, you've got Para there, so it's going to be in between the two of them uh, for that number nine jersey. So it's a pretty strong looking Claremont team. Uh, Harlequins, interestingly, Mike Brown is finally back. Um, I know he's had a kind of ongoing injury problem, so uh, that's good to see. Uh, Danny Kerr is also there at number nine. Um, but yeah, Rob Shaw is going to play. Um, Simmons is there. So yeah, Smith. Smith's is a guy that I'd like to see more of kind of running the show. Uh, that number 10 jersey. Uh, he's still pretty young. So um, kind of, I don't know. He's been one that's on the, on the radar of even New Zealanders, I think, for, for quite some time. So um yeah i'll be keen to see how he goes there's still no uh mala there's no sinkler so we'll have to see how they go uh at scrum time but uh claremont to be fair at home are pretty decent favorites the rugby forecast algorithms got them by eight the bookies have got them by 14 so predicting that one to be uh fairly lopsided um yeah I don't know. I hope Harlequins can put in a pretty good shift. I hope they were in the Champions Cup last year, so it's 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 nice to see them. Uh, it's nice to see them back in some of their their big guns there as well. Campanero's on the bench. Landajo, who's I think a new signing, on the bench. Tavabati's there, so uh, it's a decent squad in its own right. But um, yeah, obviously we'll see how it goes on game day. Uh, the last one, Ospreys and Munster. Again, 6.30. So I'm picking between Claremont Quinns or Osprey's Munster as to which game to watch. Uh, I, will, I will decide that tomorrow morning. Uh, if you guys can give me a reason to watch one or the other, uh, feel free to do so in the comments. Um, Osprey's team. There's a couple of Williamses there. But there's um, oh Lydiate's captain, which is which is good news because I haven't seen him playing for a while. Uh, Marvin Ori, I haven't seen him playing in Europe as yet, so I'm kind of keen to see how he goes. Uh, Fenters at nine, Price is at ten. Um, 
Yeah, there's a few names there that I'm not as familiar with as I should be, to be honest. Oh, interestingly, um, Ella Davis is on the bench, and so is Nikki Smith, and so is oh, so is Bradley Davis. Okay, so I guess I mean with the World Cup having finished not that long ago, it's kind of a good idea to kind of ease some of these guys uh, back into it as well. Oh, and Mapu Fia is there as well. Okay, they're at home. I know they've not been in the best form, but we will see. Uh, Munster's side, um, I see a fair few Irish internationals in that lineup. Um, Conor Murray starting at 9. Uh, Blindell starting at 10. From memory, the last time I saw Munster play, he came on as a substitute. But uh, anyway, Earls is there. Um... Yeah, Conway's there, and Conway's been in top form. I saw him saw a score a blistering try the other day. Uh, Jean Klein is there, Omahani's captain. Stunder is there at number eight. Um, yeah, it's a pretty good looking Munster team, but uh, they are playing away from home. I haven't actually checked what their most recent Pro 4 team result was, so mm, that will be interesting. But I did watch that game between Munster and Ulster the other day where, where Munster kind of uh, don't want to say ground out a win, but they they did enough to get a, a pretty decent win over a, a good Ulster side. So um, yeah, we'll see. Interesting. The rugby forecast only got Munster by five, but the bookies have got Munster by fifteen points. So yeah, we will see how things go. But yeah, those are all the Champions Cup games for for Saturday. Uh, it's going to be an interesting one for me because you guys know uh, I am a child of the Super Rugby generation. So um, watching the Champions Cup, I've mentioned it before, is not something that I used to do kind of week in, week out. But it's something I'm doing now. Uh, and there's certainly some names that don't ring that many bells for me. So I'm kind of keen to see how some of these guys go. Anybody you think I should be looking out for, do, do drop that in the comments because I always tend to take more notice of the guys that you guys have suggested that I look out for. But um yeah, other than that, you guys let me know your thoughts on the fixtures and um, how you think they're going to go. I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.